um, with line frequency sidebands with running speed sidebands around those. Now, rotor bar issues have been the number one uh, method, or I, I'm sorry, the number one reason why current signature analysis was developed a long time ago. Oak Ridge National Labs developed the original electrical signature analysis equipment. Uh, one of the primary researchers was a Howard Haynes. He's still involved in the industry. Right now, though, he's spending more time using electrical signature analysis on aircraft uh, fuel pumps and the like. All of this work went into uh, looking at the impact of the sidebands around line frequency. And uh, don't worry, I'm going to show you some examples of this. Um, and the distance down from the top of the frequency to the peaks, the peak sidebands around line frequency. If you are taking current directly from the cables going to the motor, the common in the industry um, limit is 35 dB down. So when you get a point where from the peak of the line frequency down to 35 hertz is indicated, that should be an issue where you would remove the motor because that means you have multiple fractured or broken rotor bars. Now what's interesting about this, and this will go along with the case study I'm going to show you, is that if you are taking your data from the machine's CTs, say for instance you're testing a, a 4160 volt motor, you're normally not testing directly on the um, uh, on the uh, cables going to the motor. You're normally testing off the CT leads from those cables. Now the CT um, itself, most permanently mounted CTs, will cause a dampening effect. So um, for those who have had experience with mechanical vibration, you know that the further you get away from the bearing, so you have a thick piece of steel or you have to test through the housing of an electric motor, you know that your frequency or your amplitudes when you're testing are dampened a fair amount. Same thing happens with electrical signature analysis. Most permanently mounted CTs do not have the correct um, reaction to, to uh, that you need for electrical signature analysis, so the results, the peaks will be dampened a little bit. So when you do see the peaks appear, you know that that's an issue that you may want to address. Now, I am going to get into a rotor bar uh, test, and I'm going to ask if I have any questions so far. If you have a question, unmute, uh, ask the question. I will repeat your question because I'm recording it at this end, and um, uh, and I will do my best to answer it. So are there any questions? Okay. Moving on. Now, as I said, this particular screen, this is using the Areva or Framatome Empath software. It will look different if you're using a PDMA or if you're using uh, a Baker instrument, um, all, all of which have the data there as well. IRIS also has a handheld current-only meter uh, available. This screen also, um, or I'm sorry, this software is also, this exact software is also used by Altest Pro. Uh, it's generated by one manufacturer, used by uh, actually three um, electrical signature analysis instrument providers. If I zoom in here, this top screen is an indicator of current. Now, you'll notice that the current goes up and down from a, just over, just almost 104 and a half amps down to about 102 amps. Now, mind you, this data was taken through a CT um, on a compressor motor. Um, you'll notice that this is happening at regular intervals across a 10 second time period. How I used to check for broken rotor bars when I was in the field service industry many years ago uh, was actually using an analog ammeter, not the new digital ones. Um, it had to be a true analog meter and literally watching the needle. And if I connected up to the cable of a motor that had a broken rotor bar, I would see a regular ticking action. And that would occur 
just like this waveform that you're looking at here. Now I'm going to eliminate this so we can see the screen a little bit better. Is everybody seeing the screen okay? Okay, if you're not, let me know. So I'm assuming you are. Okay, this middle spectra, this middle peak right here is at 60 hertz, and that represents at the peak zero. Now what we do uh, here is you'll see it in measured in dB down to minus 100 dB. Minus 100 dB means that is that is relative force of uh, whatever is occurring. Okay, so when I discuss the term dB down, that means minus 10, minus 20, minus 30. So it's down from whatever the peak is. In all the frequencies, I'll see that. Another thing I could look at which uh, some instruments will focus on just this, is what's called the linear spectrum. The linear spectrum, I'm looking at the actual um, amplitude in current. And as you can see, a lot of things become a lot smaller. Okay, let's get in there. So for this, for instance, the sideband that was showing at about minus 45 dB down is now showing at 0.7 amps as compared to 140 amps. Doesn't seem like a lot, but what is the relative magnitude of force? The relative magnitude is about 45 dB down. So if I take a look at this, I'm not going to go through these functions because it's specific to a manufacturer. Okay. I have these as sidebands. They're very distinct peaks around the line frequency. When you see distinct peaks like this, very close to the line frequency, a majority of the time this will relate to the rotor bars. Two distinct peaks. If I have multiple peaks on either side, that usually indicates something happening outside the motor. Because what you'll also find as you go through electrical signature analysis is around this line frequency, everything related to the rotor um, will, will occur. So if I have, say, a varying speed or a pulsating load or something else occurring on the outside of the motor, this, um, this peak will, be, will have a very broad base. Now, in this case, I have two sidebands. And uh, I've already written this down. I can highlight those from here. Um, the sidebands, uh, the upper sidebands at 63.110 hertz. This is at right about uh, 60 hertz. So I subtract the two of them, and I come out with uh, 3.052 hertz on either side. Now, this particular software automatically detects running speed and everything else. Uh, and with that pull pass frequency. What will sometimes happen is the pull pass frequency will not sit directly where it should if you have broken rotor bars. So down here, I'm looking to see if I have a peak of any magnitude at about 3 hertz. And this one here I've highlighted as PP1 is at 3.0518 hertz, which is very close to the 3.052 hertz. So this is actually my pole pass frequency, which means that as these are pole pass frequency sidebands, I have a rotor bar problem. Um, the interesting story behind this is vibration analysis was used. They thought they saw broken rotor bars. They took this compressor motor out. This compressor motor is uh, 500 horsepower, 1765, 4160 volt, 120 amp machine down here in my CT and PT ratios. Okay, send it into the repair shop. The repair shop replaced the bearings, put a nice paint job on the motor, and sent it back. So there was no problem. We went in and we took data both with online and offline motor circuit analysis and detected also broken rotor bars. So we sent it back to the repair shop again, and uh, this time um, they replaced the bearings, gave it a paint job, and sent it back. So, the next 